Hello everybody, welcome in, welcome to Yin Yoga. So my um, thumbnail pic was like a senior picture, which was kind of funny. Since I'm down on the floor and I already have the camera all set up. Anyways, we're doing some restore yoga, um, Yin Yoga at the wall tonight. So you will need a mat, you will, well you won't need a mat really, you just need a floor and you need a wall. Do you have that? If you don't have an empty-ish wall, you can um, just use your couch or come on by your bed and throw your legs, um, lay on the, gra uh, the ground and throw your legs up the bed. You'll figure it out. We've been doing a lot of, hi friend, <laughs> we've been doing a lot of figuring out lately and um, you're getting pretty good at it. So I'm really glad that you came in for this restore class tonight. I think this is the most relaxing class next restorative um, yoga that you could possibly do, which means it might not be easy for some of you. I'm gonna try. So we'll start in a place where we can find a, yay. <laughs> Um, we're going to find a nice comfortable seat. You can put your back up against the wall or you can lean up against something. Um, let me check what time it is. It's on the dot live. So glad you're here. Okay. So just find a way to get comfortable. Oh, you can put your playlist on. Sorry about that. I need to turn mine on. So the first song, if you're following along on the playlist, is Silent and it goes for about two minutes. So you won't hear the music. It will start the playlist though, in case you're wondering. Okay, so now we got the important things taken care of. Phones off, fam knows it's time for yoga. If you have a little one and they're practicing yoga, um, go get, tell them to grab their favorite uh, stuffed animal and you can use it as a breathing buddy. And when, you, um, when we're on the back, they can lay the um, favorite stuffed animal, or you can too, I'm not gonna, I don't know what you got. Um, but you can lay it on your belly, and it's called a breathing buddy, so the little buddy is there for you. Okay, so let's just sit up nice and tall, close your eyes, wherever you are. Draw the attention to the crown of the head, and imagine it just beginning to open it up to infinity. Feel yourself even rising up, wanting to get to that highest vibration that we can. The head will drop back just a little bit to bring the chin parallel with the floor. Raise your heart up. And feel the sits bones anchor down into the earth. You can even imagine maybe roots, like roots of a plant or a tree connecting to the earth. This is a very grounding practice. It's a healing practice. It's beneficial for so many different layers, physically, mentally, emotionally. So begin to watch your breath. I'm not trying to train, change it quite yet. Just watch it. Watch how it comes and goes. Maybe the exhale doesn't quite complete. And the inhale might not be very full. But just watch it as it comes and goes, a little sporadic, spontaneous. And in all of that, can you find a place your center and just be there. Start to exhale just a little bit more full. Complete the breath. Bring your hands to your heart. 
Lift your heart up into your hands, bow your head. May this practice be everything you need it to be today. And bring the hands down to the floor. You can start to open your eyes, let the brown just come in to focus slowly. So the feet will be at the wall at some point. So if you have freshly painted walls, you might want to wear socks, um, you know, just to slip down a little bit easier. Or if not, toss them up. Okay? So the easiest way to um, bring your legs up the wall is your hips are right up against the baseboard. Lean back just a little bit, and then just put your legs right up the wall one at a time. And your butt's as close to the wall as you can get it. Okay? If at some point you need to pull your butt away a little bit, of course do that. Make this practice exactly what you need it to be. If at any point you need to grab some pillows or something underneath your butt, grab that. Hands can be anywhere they want during this practice. <laughs> I look so young looking at the camera. <laughs> going crazy everybody. So from here, the legs are straight up. For right now, we'll start in cat or um, I'm sorry, butterfly pose. Bend one knee and then the other and then just open up the knees. Soles of the feet come together. Soul to soul. That's a very spiritual practice. <laughs> and then that's it. That's the pose. Arms can come alongside, they can be over your head. They can be on your stomach. Feel, feel your brow relax. Your eyeballs fall away from the eyelids. The tongue release from the roof of the mouth. Let the jaw fall open and even back towards the back of the head. Soften the shoulders. Feel the belly drop to the floor. And while you're in these shapes tonight, these yin poses, if you're not familiar with yin yoga, we hold postures for time. Okay, we're not really working muscles at all. That's a more yang idea, muscular idea. And then you find your first edge. As you're practicing, and you might have already started to feel it already, the legs will start to relax even more, and maybe the heels drop a little bit closer towards your hips. If you find that you come to a point where it's too much, that's past your edge, come out of it a little bit. And then just watch the breath. No need to watch the screen or anything else for that matter. Just enjoy this time. You're almost halfway there. So what we're doing in yin yoga, when we relax the muscles, we have a lot of things that hold us that cause rigidity and tightness. Okay, what stops us from doing things? Physically, maybe mentally, energetically. They say, I believe it's 41% our muscles are too tight. And 47% is the fascia, the fascia, that um, membrane that goes underneath the skin, over the muscles, 
over the organs uh, that allows them the skin and the muscles to just skim over each other if that doesn't get stretched or in, in yoga we call it stressed then it gets it causes fuzz and it gets tight and it gets woven tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and then we can't move and since muscle is I can't remember the percentage 30% perhaps don't quote me on that muscle also has fascia in it so yin yoga is so beneficial to any other activity that we're doing this balances us up take a few more breaths here and if your heels need to drop in just a little bit more Notice if the low back is still up off the floor. Let it just soften and relax down. Notice maybe the jaws tighter or the forehead. Keep coming back to these chronic places you hold tension. Tension we can do something about. It's the compression where the bone hits the bone where we can't do something about. Draw the knees in towards each other. If you need to, windshield wiper, move the hips around. You can come away from the wall a little bit or the couch or your bed if you're there. Take your feet up, roll out the ankles. So that was the first pose of yin yoga at the wall. Later, you'll, you'll hear me stop talking, which will be really lovely. <laughs> Feet up the wall now. So if you're on your couch, you can still have, you know, your shins up. It's still up off the floor. Oh, there's a question. Hang on, I'll get to you. <coughs> oh, it's gone. Can you ask me again? So legs straight up the wall is caterpillar pose. And I think someone just popped in to say hi. Okay, no need to watch the screen. So caterpillar pose, your legs are straight up the wall. And this is a wonderful posture to find at the end of the day. I pretty much do this every night before I go to bed. Again, make sure you have some support if you need it underneath your low back or butt or even your head. Your head, the chin, and the forehead are aligned with each other. If you notice your chin is up a lot, like you're a Pez dispenser, <laughs> waiting to put the candy in, lower your chin down. That's a sign that you're on the vagus nerve and you're expecting something. So lower the chin in line with your forehead. Notice the places of the body you can relax to the floor. Tension causes us to pull away from the floor. The more relaxed you are, the more the muscles are relaxed, you'll soften towards the earth. Turn back to breath if the mind has wandered off. You might feel the pause at the exhale. Or maybe you're someone that finds the pause at the top of the inhale. But either way, just see if you can notice something ending before something new begins.
Just remind your head to monitor off again. Bring it back to breath. Our body has the nervous system, the autonomic nervous system. And you might have heard fight or flight response, the rest and digest. Fight or flight is that primordial urge in our body to get us going, to, to flee if we need to. Saber to tiger chasing after us. And then the rest of the digest is where we don't have cortisol running through our bodies, where we don't have to coagulate the blood in case we get cut and bleed to stop the bleeding. The rest and digest is a place that we really all need to find again. Not because we're running from saber to tigers, but we have this um, thing in our life where, you know, Somebody screaming or yelling, uh, just the things we could consume on TV, loud music, violence on TV, even the hormones in our food affect this nervous system. So if you can breathe deeper, and the moment your eyes close, you begin to get into that parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and the digest. And this is where everything comes back into balance, yin and yang. We just have a few more breaths here. Reach your arms up over the head. Take a big stretch. Feel the back body stretching. Roll out the wrists, ankles. Open and close your fingers. Do the same thing with your feet. Rotate the ankles, point and flex the toes. There's a squat coming up next, almost like a malasana. So bend your knees and then separate the feet. You don't have to go too far but maybe outside of your hips. Again, this is where you find that spot where you don't go too far, too fast. Know your first edge. So wall squat. This is where you'll find your feet just kind of like slide down in chunks down the wall. Let it happen. Close your eyes. You can get into the heart and lung meridian if you reach your arms up over the head. If that's too much, you can bring your hands down. This place of relaxation. It's also a nice time to maybe take your peace fingers mm -hmm. right around the very top of the cervical spine where C1 and the occipital ridge meet. You can take the peace fingers, the index and the middle fingers together, and kind of just rock your head from side to side. Until you find that place that feels just right.
You may notice the heels have dropped down a little bit more towards the floor. You can keep them right here, or maybe even move into a happy baby pose. The feet pull away from the wall, hold on to the backs of the thighs, and the toes might even come in towards each other. Perhaps you keep your knees outside of your shoulders and your feet up. Resist the urge to reach from the insides of the knees to grab the outsides of the feet like they do in a power class. You'll be here for a few minutes and, and that's bringing kind of that yang attitude, that um, masculine, muscular attitude in. And we just want to be nice and easy and relaxed. The psoas muscles that connect the back of your um, rib cage to your hips, really connecting the upper body to the lower body, are like thick tenderloin muscles. Imagine them just relaxing down, left and right side. That's really the house of your fight or flight. We have this. The mental activity, it runs down through this bundle of nerves, our vagus nerve, the wandering nerve. It moves, it's just a big chain of nerves that run through the body. It's kind of checking to make sure everything's okay. <laughs> and if those nerves get frayed, and we have anxiety and anger, Coming up, dis ease. We might be a little reactionary when we don't need to be, causing us to jump or run. So that bundle of nerves goes through the body, it's checking everything, and if it needs to hit that fight or flight response, the psoas kicks in, makes you run. So let it all relax for now. The body is, holds all of our past memories. So big hip openers such as this might release something. It's perfectly natural. And it's our way of healing. Bring the feet back towards the wall. The knees come in and maybe a little windshield wiper from side to side, but a little way away from the wall. You can pull a little bit more away from the wall if you need to make any other adjustments that you need. The next pose is fun. It's called wall eye or figure four. And you can begin with whatever leg really feels the tightest. So you can start, I, I always start with my right because I know that's my tightest. Um, you can cross at your ankles here. And then maybe let the shin Slide down the left leg. So the right shin is maybe over the left knee at some point. So maybe you're doing your other leg first. Don't worry how far your right knee is out of the right hip. But if you can draw it a little bit closer so your right knee is somewhat in line with your hip. And at some point, you might start to bend your left knee and slide your left leg, the left foot down the wall. Just slow. Again, you're finding your first edge. And then just moving in. And the body will tell you. Don't let the ego tell the body. Really listen to the wisdom it has. 
some, some tension in your hips, some stories you keep walking around in the same path you keep trotting. And your body's telling you, and it could be the compression of your femur head hitting into your hip socket, that you can't change. That's always going to be there. The way the head of the femur goes into your hip socket. You can't change that. But what you can change is little by little. Just the ways of being. Do you need to continue to walk in the same story you've been walking in 10 years? 15 years, 20 years ago. Or even the same story as yesterday. Can you trust that the body has the wisdom to tell you this is causing pain, this is causing tension, this is causing rigidity. This is no longer working for us. Softening the back towards the earth. Those same roots you found when you were seated. And just root down from the back of your pelvis, maybe. Your spine. Don't allow yourself to go too far. If you're a person that's fairly flexible, you know, that, that is, some of it is hereditary, yes. Some of you might need to snake the right arm in between, and the hole between the knees. You might even take the ankle behind your neck, I don't know. <laughs> Remember, don't, don't force anything. This is yin yoga. We're just going about 70%. It's deep. Just to feel the stretch. There's never pain. Just a sensation. Back to the breath. Feel the low back fill up with the belly. Feel the ribs move as the lungs expand. Maybe even your collarbone pull away from the floor. Move from a twist from here. So if possible, just cross your right thigh over your left. Press your left foot into the wall or couch. Lift your butt up. Move your hips to the right. And you'll just bend both knees. Left knee. I should say, and twist over to the right side. The top of my left foot can get to the wall, and just wherever your body will land. The tailbone and crown of the head are somewhat in a straight line, lined up with each other. If you've gone too far, just back off.
begin to start to think about moving. <laughs> Release any noises that need to come out as you slowly pull the knees back towards your chest. Did you make it? Your leg's still there. <laughs> Check the right hip or the left hip if you're doing the left leg. See how it feels. Any feeling of warmth or heat is a sign of circulation. How are you doing? Are your legs still there? Good. Okay, great news. What? We got the other side. So we started with the um, figure four or the um, wall eye. This one is so interesting and you might realize a lot when we do the second side because unlike pigeon pose that we do in, you know, away from the wall in the middle of the room where we kind of have a little bit of leeway on our belly and we shift and we move, you'll start to really see the difference between one leg versus the other. And unless you've personally seen your x-ray of your femur heads and the, uh, the length of the neck of your femur head, um, you know, you really don't know exactly how different one side is versus the other until you do something like this where you, you have, you know, really good traction from the floor and the wall. So allow that to slowly come in. Let your fullest expression be like at the very end of this hold, which is, if, you, if you've noticed by now, about five minutes each posture. We have a feminine side and a masculine side, so a more dominant side. One's not better than the other. We have different guts on one side than the other. Our face looks different from the left and right side. Some people may have different color eyes or even different eye prescriptions, even contacts, glasses. So of course we're not exactly the same on each side. Feel your body breathing you. How does it feel just being held here and being breathed? And it feels a little uncomfortable for you. Just allow yourself to be taken care of here. Put the guards down. Let the protection mechanisms recede. Trust something. Trust the wisdom that made you. Trust the release.
here for the twist. Left knee comes over the right, let it fall over to the right side. The top of the right foot, let's slide down the wall. You might need to move away from the wall. The top leg might go straight out or bent completely up to you. Not to be concerned if one shoulder goes flying up off the earth. I want you just to watch in your own body, just be this observer, this experience that's happening, and maybe even a holding in your low back, mid back, upper back. Don't go too far where there's pain. Oftentimes I hear people's uh, backs crack in class. As long as it feels okay, it doesn't cause pain there. Just a shift of the vertebra. And that pop is a little gas from the buildup in the synovial fluids. back of the head on the earth. You can look off your right or your left shoulder. Just whatever feels amazing. You may notice that the breath is a lot more shallow in a twist. Just imagine the lungs just breathing as deeply as they can here. The lungs that have been breathing you your whole life. This present moment, appreciating our past, looking forward to our future, but being right here and now. It's the best we can do. Grateful for this body, grateful for this life. Grateful for this time together, this time of healing, 
feeling. Grateful that this posture is done. Pull the knees back into the chest. Uh, make some shifts, some moves. So this next pose is a wall arch and it's considered an inversion um, in yin yoga. So be very mindful if you have something going on in your back or your neck, just be mindful, take what you need. If you don't feel like doing this uh, wall arch, it's called, then just come back, find one of the uh, favorite ones that we did already. Maybe the legs straight up the wall, caterpillar, butterfly, wide legged, whatever it is. I'll show you. This next pose, it comes in stages. You might want to bring some blankets or something underneath your butt. So if you shift it away from the floor, bring your booty back towards the wall, wherever you found it to be comfortable. The knees bend and the feet come out just a little bit, not too far outside of the hips. And you don't want to come too far down the wall either. So just maybe about six inches from where you were. So from here, push your feet into the wall, press your hips up. Walk your elbows in a little bit closer to each other. Feet can come closer, maybe hip width distance. And you can stay here. My watch is already going. You can interlace. So if you've come up and it's a little bit too, too much for you, just come down and bring something underneath your hips. Feet stay propped up to the wall. Keep the hips lifted. Walk the elbows, shoulders in. You can play around a little bit here. Hands can come to the back of the hips. You can lift one leg up away from the wall and maybe drop it down over your head. If you just ate like I did, it's not feeling too good. <laughs> so you might want to come out. Change sides. Keep one foot at the wall, one over your head. Keep that foot over the head, and maybe the other one goes over. So both are over your head. So this is snail pose. You can stay here at wall arch or snail. Or we can go up towards the ceiling as long as that's okay for your neck.
anything to snail or the legs away from the wall. Feet come back to the wall. Hips are underneath the knees. Ankles are in line with the knees. Keep breathing. Slowly roll all the way back down. Ah. Whew. So healing. How do you feel? So great big heart opener from here. Probably one of my very favorites. Bend your knees. Roll to one side. Give yourself a moment here on the side before you do anything else. You can raise an arm and rest your head on your forearm or upper arm. Don't be too quick to rush out of this. Wall sphinx pose. So press yourself up away from the wall. Bring your knees up to the wall. <laughs> I don't know if you can see there. So my knees are right up to the wall. My tops of the feet are on the, on the wall. If this is too much for you, just come into a regular sphinx pose. Just come forward um, with your legs long on the floor. You can come away from the wall. So sphinx pose. Let me set the timer. Elbows um, can come forward in front of your shoulders or right underneath your shoulders. You can grab your opposite elbow if you want to. It's a great way, uh, a great reset from that wall arch that you just did. It's a great counter pose. You can drop your head if you need to. You can look forward. Hairs everywhere. <laughs> If it feels okay for your neck, you can pick up the back of your head and even drop it back a little bit. And if you're super flexy, you can um, lift your chin up and maybe take the toes to the back of your head. <laughs> Only if you need it. If this is a little bit too much compression in the low back, just come forward and you can grab your elbows. So this will revert our spine back to the natural four curves that we have. We won't be here too much longer. Shoulders pull down away from the ears. Drop your head back a little bit here. And just appreciate all the work from your yoga practice. It's not always easy relaxing, being quiet. Out those places that you notice were chronically tense the brow, the jaw, the shoulders, the hips. You can just be here just a few more moments and relax any holding. Know that if you have a seal practice, then you can press yourself up so the elbows go straight. So the hands can come out a little bit in front of you for a little bit less. It's more than sphinx, right? But it's a little bit more there. Or you can bring your hands out wider. Some people can go out to the sides and straighten the elbows. This body does not do that. <laughs> Take what you need. Let the eyes close.
Mm. Breathe in wherever you are. And breathe out. Let yourself come all the way down onto your belly. So your choice for Shavasana. You can stay right here. You can straighten out and be prone on the belly. You can keep your knees bent. You can come back to the um, back. You can swing your legs back up the wall if you need to. Maybe a traditional shavasana on the back, away from the wall. Wherever you choose, get comfortable. I'll cut you out in a few moments. Shavasana, corpse pose. Not just the death of the practice, but maybe the ending of some of that protection that you felt. The end of some idea that you need to keep walking the same way in your life. But it's also a new beginning. There's a poem by Rumi, a mystic poet, on Resurrection Day. It's called, On Resurrection Day, your body testifies against you. Your hand says, I stole money. Your lips say, I said meanness. Your feet say, I went where I shouldn't. Your genitals say, me too. They will make your praying sound hypocritical. Let your body's doing speak openly now, without even saying a word. As a student walking behind a teacher says, this one knows more clearly than I the way. Allow your body to stay in whatever shape you have it in and for as long as you need to. If you're ready to come out, slight movements in the toes and the ankles. If you are on your belly, find a way into child's pose. If you are on your back, bring yourself to one side, a supported fetal position, a new beginning, a new way. Take all the grace, all the compassion, all the kindness you gave to this body energetically, mentally, physically, and take that with you into the rest of the evening, into the rest of the week. Now more than ever, and compassion and grace is really what's calling us to offer to ourselves and to others. Bring yourself up to seated. Invite the eyes to close once again and the hands come to the heart. May this practice be everything we needed it to be. May we offer it up in a place of gratitude and joy and thanks. May we receive the grace that we are given by birthright and maybe continue to offer it to our fellow family. Loka, Samasta, Sufi no Bhavantu, may all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness and may my actions have something to do with it. Let's meet each other here in the place of our true nature, love and peace and joy. Namaste.
you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Uh, if it's evening, or if you're watching this right now, uh, wherever it is, whatever time it is, please drink water. Okay, flush all of that out now, and you'll be feeling amazing the rest of the uh, day today and into tomorrow. And anytime you need this practice, I will come down. Um, you know, do it. Do it. You're welcome. Thanks, Jenna. Um, anytime you need to, take a couple minutes. Do one of those poses just for a few minutes a day. Um, you'll get some great sleep tonight, I promise you. So thanks so much, everybody. Namaste. Thank you, friend. Love you. I can't wait to see you all. Bye.